What's up guys, this is Nick. Over the weekend, I got my Mustang pretty dirty driving it up through the mountains and I'm about to go through a real thorough wash on it to get everything off of it. I've been running a mobile detailing business for the last four years, so I'm hoping that in this video that I'm able to kind of show you my process and some things that I've learned that could hopefully help you. I'm going to be using my Sunjo SPX 9004 electric pressure washer with my MTM Hydro gun with a swivel, MTM Hydro quick disconnect fittings, and a 50 foot quarter inch hose. I absolutely love this setup. It works great for what I do and it's also pretty quiet. For my business, I use this five gallon bucket with an organizer on it to put all of my brushes in, which is great. I'm gonna show you what I pulled out of it. I have this wheel woolly that I bought off of Amazon for cheap that is absolutely phenomenal. Um, I'm using this very fine detail brush right here. If you were to use a typical boar's hair detail brush like what's over there, it will scratch my very soft black powder coated wheels, so this is perfect. And then to clean out the wheel wells, I'm using this Chemical Guys long handled brush, which is extremely convenient. And and that's really about it. I'm not going to be cleaning the tires today because they're not dirty. They don't really need it. I'm going to be using a foam cannon and Purple Powers vehicle and boat wash soap. This is not a pH neutral soap. This is slightly basic so it has a little bit more power in removing stuff. The reason that I wash my car so frequently is things like this on the front bumper where I have all of these dead bugs that are on here. If you do not remove this in a timely manner, it'll etch into the paint and it'll actually do permanent damage on there as well as any embedded contaminants that you would have to use a clay bar to remove. If you remove them early enough, they don't embed themselves into the surface you don't need a clay bar clay barring scratches up the car so obviously we want to prevent that this stuff gives you a little bit extra power when you're washing your car to remove contaminants that would normally get embedded onto the car so I love having that little bit of extra help I don't care that it removes the wax or the sealant that's on there a little bit quicker than a typical pH neutral soap I love that it gets all of the embedded contaminants off I'm gonna be using it on my wheels as well the reason I'm not gonna be using a real like wheel cleaners because one they're not that dirty I don't really need the extra help I have opti seal on these wheels and I want to make that last as long as possible so if I don't need a heavy degreaser that's going to take off the opti seal I'm not going to use it this is going to provide way more lubrication than any of your typical washes will so I'm going to spray the foam cannon on the wheels I also have soap poured into my bucket of water right here and now we're going to get to it before we get started, just want to mention I'm always going to do the wheels on the car first because it's going to get the paint slightly wet in the process. I don't want to have the paint perfectly washed, do the wheels, and then get water spots on it. I want to be able to go and clean the paint afterwards. So doing the wheels first, and we're also going to do the side that's in the shade first. The rinse is always going to be the most important part of whatever you're doing, whether it's washing the wheels or washing the paint. So you want to make sure that you take your time to be thorough with it. I'm going to go into these wheel wells first and scrub it out as much as I possibly can with the brush. This long handle brush is extremely convenient for being able to do a thorough job. Normally I'd be cutting my hands up, having them in the wheel wells, hitting the different sharp pieces of metal and whatnot. So this is very convenient to have. My car is low, so I'm not going to be able to do too much before we put it back in the bucket. Give it a quick rinse real quick. I always clean the barrels of the wheels before the faces, starting at the topmost part of the wheel because this is what all the soap is going to fall off of first. So I'm angling the wheel woolly in here to get it behind the spoke and I'm making sure visually that I'm doing a thorough job on it. While I'm here, I'm also going to clean the top part of the caliper. I have these calipers painted, so being able to keep the brake dust from embedding on them is going to help them keep them looking decent for as long as possible. So use the wheel woolly to clean the top portion of the caliper. Once again, come in here and look at how I'm kind of angling it, straightening it out, then angling to the other side of it. And we're just going to do this the whole way around the rim. The reason that I always do the barrel first is because because it's typically the dirtiest part. So let's say you get the, the face of the wheels really clean and then you clean the barrel and as you're doing it, you get dirt all over the face of it. You're gonna have to do it again. So you might as well just hit it just once. Clean out the wheel woolly, put it back in here. Now we're gonna grab our very soft bristle detail brush and you want to kind of like on any wheel that you do you want to find a rhythm with it so mine is I always start in this inside pocket I work down work up come around 
and then we're on to the next one. When you work in a rhythm like that, it makes it very easy to do a thorough job because it's there's so many intricate parts of a wheel, especially like this, that it's very easy to miss them. But if you're doing the same thing on every one of them, you're most likely not gonna miss it. So I'm gonna go around and do the whole face of the rim on the outermost parts of it like this. Spray a little water on it. And then now I'm going to work this inside section of it. So to get in the lug nuts, I'm going to kind of clean around here, put the brush into the lug nut hole, and then I'm just going to spin it. Do this on all of them. wet now I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna clean the caliper with my detail brush this is not something that's always going to be necessary but this is how I do it on my car because I spent a lot of time painting these calipers I'm gonna make sure that they're looking right I just foamed the wheel a second time and the reason for that is whenever it comes time to dry the car I do not want to have to be removing brake dust that I missed um, during that process because I'm more likely to scratch it. So I'm really just going to make sure that I did a thorough job on this and another reason I'm going to hit these areas. I'm going to hit this portion of the rotor this back portion of the rim Because I've spent a lot of time and effort keeping these clean So that's just something that I'm going to do You definitely don't have to do that on your car But that's kind of the standard that I do things to so I'm just going around and just kind of hitting all the major spots Getting into the tight areas of the rim that I may have potentially missed and once I've done that, we're going to give it one more rinse and then we're on to the next wheel. As a result of having OptiSeal on these wheels, you can see that just after this rinse how hydrophobic it is and how clean these wheels are. Having some sort of sealant, ceramic coating or anything on the wheels is going to make it come a lot cleaner just from the rinse. It's, not, it's never going to be all the way clean, but it's going to come cleaner. What that means is that there's less contaminants that are going to be getting stuck inside of our brushes and scratching up the surface of the wheels, which is going to keep them shinier for longer. So that's another huge aspect as to why you want that protection on there. The most important part of washing a car to me is the rinse. I always make sure I am extremely thorough on it because anytime you want to be touching a car you have to make sure you have plenty of lubrication and have as little amount of contamination as possible because it's very easy to scratch the wheels, it's very easy to scratch paint, anything on the car. So you just want to make sure that you get as much off of the vehicle with the rinse as possible. Something that can help with that is using a degreaser on things like dead bugs. So on the front bumper of the car if you spray it with some super clean or something that's able to start dissolving those bugs and then you pressure wash it all off you have less stuff that's going to be stuck on the surface of the car that gets stuck in your wash mitt that then scratches your paint so that is a good recommendation i see a lot of people that foam a car pressure wash it off and then wash it the only time that i ever find that necessary is if the vehicle has like a bunch of mud on the surface of it rocks tar just any kind of contaminant that as you pressure wash it off could roll down the surface of the paint and scratch it along the way having foam on there will help kind of give it a media that it can travel across and reduce the friction that's being caused so you scratch the surface less this is a very clean car I'm not doing that um, a lot of people say that like if you foam it and then pressure wash it off you'll remove more stuff unless you're using like a really strong soap like even stronger than this purple power stuff I personally don't notice that it's really any more thorough with the foam than pressure washing it by itself because most of the soaps are pretty like mild so so I think that it's a waste of time unless you need the lubrication for rinsing it off, which I don't. If you foam the car, you wash a section, and then that section dries as a result of the sun, all of those contaminants that you had removed and gotten into that soap that you were supposed to be able to wash away is now stuck on the paint again, and the only way to really get it clean would be to wipe that area again. So you're just wasting time. You want to make sure that you keep that soap wet the entirety of the time that it's on there. For that purpose, I'm only going to do half of the car because I don't want to have too much to worry about as I'm washing it and making sure that everything stays wet.
so once again we're using common sense today and what that means is that I am washing the side of the car that's in the shade first and since the side of the car that's in the shade is gonna dry out um, in less time I also go ahead and hit the whole rear end and the whole front end of the car during this process of the wash and the reason for that is because if I did it on the other side of it then I'd have less time to worry about it drying out so it just works out well I'm gonna hit all the top surfaces after I do about two panels I'll flip to the other side of the micro of the wash mitt these are the rag company wash mitts they're absolutely phenomenal I'll do a panel or two flip it over do the next panel and then get it wet again switch to the next one and I'll go and start hitting the other lower portions of the car so I'm staying above this body line on the first time that I wash it then I'm going to about this body line right here the whole way around the car and then I'm just very slowly gonna keep working it down so go to about right here on the door. The trunk is usually always gonna be the dirtiest portion of the car. So I always work that last before I hit this. As you can see, we're starting to dry out. We're just gonna get it wet, just give it a mist. All right, so he gave it just a light little mist. Now we're switching to the washcloth that I used to do the bottom half of the car. And we're gonna start doing the bottom most body line all the way around the car. You have to make sure that when you're washing the front bumper of the car where it gets hit with all the dead bugs as well as the mirror and the windshield that you're looking through the soap to see what's still left on the surface because this isn't an area where you just wipe over it once and it's clean. This is something you actually have to really work. So just make sure you're looking through the soap. No fucking shit, fucking dumbass. So now I'm just gonna have to wash the car here to here because I already did the front bumper and the rear trunk in that first hit. Another tip is that you have to clean under the windshield wipers in order to clean the whole windshield. You only want to have the wipers up for a short amount of period as, it's, as you can because these things will fall pretty quickly and it's possible that in some circumstances it could crack the windshield. And um, if you're doing that as a business and you're doing it for someone else's car or even your own car, that's a bad day. So make sure that you're careful around those and just know that that is a possibility. So the easiest time to scratch your car is during the drying process because at all other times, like when you're waxing it, you have wax as lubrication. Whenever you're washing it, you got soap as lubrication. But when it comes time to drying it, you just have your drying towel, water, and the car. So there isn't too much lubrication going on. I like using the, uh, the bead maker as so there isn't too much lubrication. You need to have some sort of a product to add some lubrication to the drying towel so that you're less likely to scratch it, especially if there's still some dirt left over from the wash, which is a really common thing to have. Uh, in this specific scenario, I'm using bead maker because I already have some of it on the car, so it's just kind of topping it off, helping kind of replace what was removed during the wash. 
Um, when I do use bead maker in this way, I never spray it directly on the car because it'll spot really weirdly if you take like a millisecond too long to start wiping it off. So I just put a few squirts in the towel, work a panel or two, and then keep going. When I'm drying the wheels, I do like to spray bead maker directly onto the surface of them so that I can get as much on there as possible really. And I'm not worried about it spotting quite as much because wheels are not really something that are meant to look as perfect as the paint or a car that you drive often because they're always covered in brake dust and scratched up and whatnot. So I'm not worried about it. I just want as much protection on there as possible so that they're easy to clean in the future, less likely to scratch them and they got a little bit more shine. So like I said, I'm using this first microfiber to rub everything in and um, work the product in and dry off the majority of what's on here and then I'm going to use this second microfiber afterwards to go in and get a streak free.